Hearing none, welcome everybody. Consideration of approval of the agenda. So move, Your Honor. Second. Second. Clerk could call the roll. Starr. Aye. Jaeger. <coughs> Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. The agenda is approved as submitted. Consideration of approval of the minutes of the September 8 and September 16 me meetings. Any discussion or questions? So move, Your Honor. Second. Clerk will call the roll. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. The minutes of the September 8 and September 16 meetings are approved. Consideration of approval of the consent calendar. Any questions regarding the consent calendar? So move. Second. Quick call the roll. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Consent calendar is approved as submitted. Business of the mayor. I have. Something that came across <coughs> recently uh, that I wanted to put in with the proclamations because the the week that we're talking about, September 28th <coughs> through October 2, 2015, has to do with National Manufacturing Week. And I, I think the reason why I want to make sure we at least note that is uh, in some of the ad uh, advertising for the particular uh, uh, activities, people like uh, Cambrex, uh, Metis, uh, and um, let's see, one more, <coughs> Winnebago, are, um, are part of that uh, <coughs> advertisement. And, if, and I think Charles City is quite well known for having a, a strong manufacturing base and it's it's a, our way forward <coughs> into the future in terms of continuing to build on that base so I'll read the proclamation that has been submitted <coughs> the proclamation supporting National Manufacturing Week September 28th through October 2 2015 whereas manufacturing makes a significant contribution to the national, state, <coughs> and local economy, and whereas manufacturing provides good employment opportunities and careers for skilled workers, and whereas our community is fortunate to be the home <coughs> of many great manufacturing companies, and whereas our community's manufacturing companies are vitally important <coughs> the prosperity of Charles City. Now, therefore, the the city of Charles City does hereby <coughs> proclaim September 28th through October 2, 2015 as National Manufacturing Week. And we urge all citizens to join in recognizing the value of manufacturers and the importance they serve in our community. Signed by myself after this is uh, approved. So I would submit that for approval. So move. Second. Clerk will call the roll. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. The proclamation is approved and we'll submit it for the file. <clears throat> Next up is a request for use of Central Park on October 3 by Community Revitalization <coughs> or Tailgate Party. Discussion. Well, Mark Wicks from uh, Community Revitalization has asked to, to utilize Central Park on October 3rd for a tailgating event, which will uh, <coughs> run from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and run in coordination with the uh, um, the Witch Fest this this year, and is designed to help uh, diversify the events going on to get a larger crowd. And they're going to have a big screen TV down there and be playing the. Uh, the Iowa Wisconsin game, and so they're making a request to, to utilize the uh, the park for that purpose. Do I have anything further to add? Representative of Community Revitalization. This is an event by Community Revitalization that is being done to in Your partnership. Name, I'm sorry, Mark Wicks from Community Development. 
Um, New Revitalization is doing this event in conjunction with the Chamber's Witch Fest retail promotion. Uh, we want to have an outdoor, another reason to get people downtown. Uh, like you said, it's going to be for a diverse audience. We'll be offering uh, the Iowa-Wisconsin game on the band shell and a 65-inch <coughs> television. We'll have high V grilling, uh, burgers and brats, and they'll also have a nacho bar. The pub crawlers will have a small beer garden. We'll be selling popcorn, pop, and water as well, and having a beanbag tournament um, with uh, cash prizes for the winners. So we're looking forward to a fun event. First time we've tried this one, and it's all come together really well. And uh, the event will go approximately 11 a.m. to about 4 p.m. The game they just announced is at 11, but it depends on how long the uh, beanbag tournament goes um, and how many participants we have. We're looking for a good turnout with that. No. So Go it ahead. sounds good. Uh, the press is temporarily left, but that left, but that means the chamber's out on a witch hunt. Mm. That's right. Go ahead. <laughs> no cauldrons or dunking stools or <laughs> steaks or anything like that. Uh, you can do whatever you want after four o'clock, and it's not our event. So <laughs> beyond that, um, just asking, and, and, and not on city property. <laughs> We've had great cooperation from everybody, and uh, this this event's come together pretty quickly as for a first time event. We're all excited. We got good sponsorship. <coughs> We've had real good reaction to it, and uh, Park and Rec is going to leave the tables and the uh, picnic for uh, another week or so for us. We'll be able to utilize those, and again, the city's provided the band shell, so we appreciate that. What time does it start? Eleven o'clock. Same sounds time as the good game. event, Mark. Yeah, sounds great. Should be fun. Thank you. Discussion or a motion? So move. Second. <coughs> Clerk, call the roll. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Yeager. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Okay, the request for use of Central Park <coughs> is granted. Consideration of resolution number 115-15, adopting the Floyd County multi-jurisdictional <coughs> multi-hazard Mitigation plan. Discussion. Well, uh, at one of our previous uh, workshops, we had <coughs> Matt O'Brien attend from NIACOG um, and review the Floyd County multi jurisdictional multi hazard mitigation plan. Say that real Say that again. It's <laughs> really a mouthful. Um, so, in pre preparing for this plan, city staff <coughs> and NIACOG, worked, we worked together to address our top hazard concerns, which uh, some of the foremost ones uh, included flooding, tornadoes, traffic accidents, has, hazmat issues, and, and, and the like. So having this plan adopted and in place will allow, will allow participating entities such as the city, or even the school for that matter, to plan to receive federal and state funding instead of a declared disaster. I know these are usually a precursor to safe rooms, too, if you want to build a safe room and get federal funding. So it could become very handy with some of the construction happening. Does this uh, plan include um, not just the event itself, but the mitigation aspects of things so that we can tie this to some of the things we're working on involving flood control, that kind of thing? It ha it, it'll have some mitigating, mitigating measures in it. Uh, one of the things it doesn't really address though specifically is like having like an emergency plan list of like, you know, owners. If you have a list of who has ex excavators and backhoes and, and things of that nature, that's, that's something kind of uh, above and beyond what, what that would get into, which we would have on a local level, which we probably have to a certain extent. But um, as far as mitigation measures, that, that would be covered within that plan. Other questions or discussion? I so move. Second. Quick call the roll. Starr. Aye. Yeager. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Resolution 115-15 <coughs> is approved. <coughs> Consideration of Resolution 116-15. Approving the state finance report for fiscal year 2014-2015. Discussion. <coughs> this is a report that's required by the DOT every year. Um, it's basically just a summary of all of our street-related expenses, both in the road use tax fund and our general fund. 
We have to list out all of our equipment we have that we use on the streets, debt that we have that pertains to streets, <coughs> projects that we've completed through the year. Um, so it's something that we need to turn in, otherwise they start withholding our road use tax payments, and that's not a good thing. So it's uh, due September 30th every year. So I've included the report, um, the, the summary sheet. I didn't get any of the detail to you, but it's basically just a summary of all of our street-related expenses and revenue. Unless we have a really big project, this thing seems to run about the same amount of generally general numbers every year. Generally, yeah. From what I recall of the prior year's yeah. reports. So. Yeah. Further questions or discussion? It's so moved. Second. Clerk will call the roll. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Resolution 116-15 is approved. Consideration of Resolution 117-15, approving <coughs> facade funding for Charles Theater, 409 North Main. Discussion. Well, actually, this this uh, this resolution and the two following are all in uh, court, uh, coordination with our facade improvement grant, which is a city-funded grant that has been on hiatus for the last uh, four years as we participate in the downtown challenge grant with that facade program. So we're re re we we're reinstituting this program. Um, this last budget season budget season we uh, plugged in twenty five thousand dollars into the budget uh, to. <coughs> as a maximum amount or, or amount to uh, uh, potentially award for this season and we've had three applicants and the uh, design committee uh, from community revitalization review, reviewed the applicants and made the following recommendations for award. Uh, we have the Charles Theater uh, which has a total project cost of $79,144. They're applying for the maximum amount of 10000 uh, for repair, reseal, and protective glazing of the Art Deco terracotta facade. And then at the Stacy and Stacy Ackerson property, 1006 North Grand, they have a project that includes tuck pointing, window installation, new exterior doors, uh, with a total project cost of 20950 <coughs> And they are also asking for the $10,000 uh, cap. Um, both of those, both of those and these, uh, uh, Asked and asked and received the uh, recommendation from the committee for the 10,000 max. The re remaining $5,000 that was that was left was um, um, recommended to Sam and Julie Offerman on their commercial building uh, project at 707 South Gilbert. They have a total project cost of 13,394 to address um, issues associated with uh, ADA accessibility and curb repair. And uh, the uh, the total max that they could apply for would be just over six thousand. We had five thousand dollars left, so that's what the the committee reviewed and, and awarded. So, out of the total twenty five thousand, we have twenty five thousand uh, rec recommended to be awarded to those three different entities. Okay, we're uh, <coughs> at this point handling one seventeen dash fifteen. There'll be two more resolutions coming in, uh, on the remaining items, but this one has to do with the Charles Theater. This is for the Charles Theater for $10,000. Discussion. And what was the work again done, uh, being done for the theater? This would be, it's for uh, resealing and protective glazing of the Art Deco terracotta facade on the building. And that's different than what's been going on down there for the last week or 10 days? It has. I think Mark could probably speak to this a little bit. It is. What's going on currently is work on the gold leaf itself. They broke this project out to two separate ones because they can't have begun the work that they're asking for until it's approved. Yeah. So that particular one, I've been watching that one closely since it's next door. Mm -hmm. If you drive by uh, during the daytime, the cold leaf, I'm telling you, really shines right now. But that's what they've been working on. The f that facade actually requires quite a bit of work, so they broke it up into two different projects. Okay. How many people does that theater sit? <coughs> I want to say 250, but I'm not sure. Okay. I'd so move for 117.15. Second. Any other questions or discussion? 
Clerk will call the roll. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Yeager. Aye. 117-15 is approved. Consideration of Resolution 118-15, approving facade funding for Stacy and Stacy Ackerson, 1006 North Grand Avenue. Discussion. This Any is the question? former Charlie Western Railroad building, um, right next to the three spurs there on uh, North Grand. The building has been uh, unoccupied for several decades. So they're proposing to uh, rehab it and return it to use. Uh, the first floor is commercial, the second floor as uh, uh, residential rentals. <coughs> I drove. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I uh, happened to drive past. I've lived in here for Trusty for quite a while. Happened to drive past it. I didn't think it was in that rough a shape. Drove past it. That building is is pretty rough, but I'm excited that they're going to be doing this project. It needs work, but it's got a lot of character inside. It's a really neat building, mm -hmm. and we're excited to see what uh, what can be done. And their plans for the exterior would bring it back pretty much the way it originally looked. Yeah, and, and so this, this money really isn't going to touch a whole lot. It's, a, it's just part of the overall. They're doing a big project. This goes towards, you know, part this of the This is basically area. preservation of the yeah, exterior. Mm -hmm. What did the railroad use that building for, Mark? I don't know. I know they, they had uh, tie storage and rail storage in the back. There's a number of concrete piers uh, behind the building um, that are very large and would be uh, difficult to remove. And this project is actually uh, a different phase of it is going to be reusing those as is to make storage units. So we'll be maintaining that. <coughs> I'm sure it was offices. Um, it's got a giant two-story safe in the middle of the building. <laughs> so. Wow. Which is neat with this project. They'll be uh, saving that, and it's it's built into the way they're going to reuse it. They're going to uh, weld in place the open safe door. It still says Charlie Western Railroad above it, and utilize those as walk-in closets. Oh, wow. That's a, a very strong building. My mother-in-law worked in that building for years, and it's good to bring it back to life. My question is, this funding comes out of the Riverside TIF District. Correct. And this is right on the edge of it, or is it in the district? It is right on the edge. All right. Well, we're stretching a little to bring it in. Okay. And that, that's fine. It's me. on North Grand, and Riverside Tiff involves North Grand. It, yeah, that is right at the border. It is in the newly expanded Main Street downtown district. Okay. Uh, we had state staff here and walked them. We've got to make a, a good, solid argument to get them to approve what our downtown district is. And they did approve that as being downtown. We can legally move that into the area to be covered on that. Well, I don't think we're moving the ambulance right on the border there, so it's as long as it's inside that area, it's inside the, the area. The border, you know, it's delineated on a map, so whatever falls within that border on the map is included in that area, and that's the Very way the you. downtown area and the Riverside TIF have been delineated. So that being said, I'll move for it. Second. Further questions or discussion? <coughs> Clerk will call a roll. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Yeager. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Resolution 118-15 is approved. Consideration of Resolution 119-15, approving facade funding for <coughs> Sam and Julie Offerman at 707 Gilbert Street. Discussion. This building, if you're not familiar with it, is the one that houses Mercy Dialysis Center uh, next door to uh, Quick Star. Kind of same question I've asked before. Um, what's the specific project, uh, as, as specific as you can get for this, this property? The this specific grant? project for this is to replace deteriorated sidewalk adjacent to the sides of the building and widen them and put in curb and gutter, for, not gutter, but curb. Um, for ADA compliance because of the, the clientele that the, the renter requires. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so I, I talked about this at, at length, sometimes a little too much at our planning session. Um, I think it's a great business that's in there. However, um, I don't think you know, decisions are based on who is in there or who isn't. This is, a, to me, a structural and uh, 
it's a facade grant, and I do not believe that this project uh, uh, is in the spirit of this grant at all. So it's it's one of those marginal, but there is a handicapped accessibility in the back of the building. This is where the uh, uh, transit buses pull up um, is to that entry point. Uh, there's if uh, if that business that that renter is unsatisfied that uh, that's a landlord tenant issue. They could there's I could give you five locations right now they can move into in a heartbeat and still be in town. This project, whether it happens or not, would not hurt that business. And it shouldn't be a factor whether or not it hurts the business or not. I agree they need to have a handicap accessible location, but this grant is not for this project. Further discussion? Do the guidelines for the applications exclude this type of project? Does not disqualify it. Okay. And it, the committee. It, it, it comes down to what your uh, definition of the exterior is. It talks about the facade or exterior of the building. So in this case, the design committee looked at the fact that the entryways to the building are dependent on that accessibility on those adjacent sidewalks. It's not the sidewalk running in front of it, it the public sidewalk. It is the adjacent two sides to the building that lead to the entryways. And to me, the steps are an exterior of the lot, not an exterior of the building. Um, as was hinted to, it's kind of comes down to interpretation. Uh, I see walls, windows, doors; those are facade. That's that's a facade project. That's exactly what it is: is interpretation. Yep. In this particular grant, like I said, it does not disqualify it, but it's a gray area, and it comes down to what your definition of exterior is. Mm -hmm. And and people are encouraged to you know apply for a grant. I mean, you know, whether they're a definite or not, you know, apply for it. Worst that can be done is, is you know, they'll be told no. Okay. And so sometimes there's going to be projects that don't fit within the scope. And again, I'm not saying anything negative about the Dallas Center that's in there. I think it's going to be a great project. I just don't think this specific grant fits with that project. Further discussion? Well, I, I was not at the planning session Wednesday night when you discussed it, but I did follow up on it and talk to a couple staff members. Um, I can't agree. A facade is a facade is a building, and I don't, I don't like extending that to sidewalks, curb and gutter. And then we'll be talking about parking lots, and God knows what we open the door to. So I think the building improvements have to be building improvements. It has no direct bearings on who owns it or what's in it. It is an improvement of the building for the betterment of the community. That's what I kind of look at it as. So. That's where I'm coming from, I guess. Further discussion? Steve and I have discussed, too, the need to uh, revisit the criteria for this particular grant and tighten it up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little vague. Sometimes to our benefit, sometimes maybe not. Um, but, yeah, we, ha we have about a, a paragraph description for the program, and that's, that's <laughs> all that's laid out. So it's I take it this is, a, this is a program through revitalization, is that correct? It's actually city-funded. Okay. And revitalization administers for the city. Right, but as but as as opposed to or compared to old programs that we had in our <coughs> ordinances, like uh, RIP and HIP programs, this is actually this de this program is defined by you guys, and we fund it. Right. It's my understanding it's, it was in place before I took over. It has not been used for the past four years because of the facade master plan. Okay. This <coughs> this is in the Riverside TIF district. Right? This is. Again, in the expanded district um, approved by Main Street. Further discussion? The main reason for that, Jerry, is to include both the museum and uh, uh, Sherman House bed and breakfast in the courthouse. So it was extended across the river right there, and this falls just within it. Is the Sherman House in the yes. district? Okay. I think it should be noted that you know we, we utilize uh, Riverside TIF funds to fund this project. So whatever we we, we put twenty five thousand dollars in as a kind of a marker, but whatever we award will be what we certify this coming season to be mm -hmm. reimbursed in the following year through TIF. So you you did say that you have an advisory committee and they spent a lot of time discussing this, and it was I don't know exactly what words you used, but basically questionable. And in the end, they voted to fund this. 
Correct. They reviewed it. And I, again, I get, it came down to their definition. And in, in this point, the committee's definition, they decided of the exterior would include the outside entryway into the building. And I misspoke. They voted to recommend to us that yes, we find it. Yes, they cannot it. approve yeah. it. They all can yeah. do is recommend it to the I city because it's city funding. Further questions or discussion? Are there any motions to approve the funding or not? Since we have a committee recommendation and they've reviewed it, I'll so move. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Malero. I'll vote A only because I think if you don't support your committee, you won't have a committee very long to make these recommendations. So, so I'll vote, vote A. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Star. Aye. Jaeger. Nay. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. No. The ayes have it. And 119-15 is approved. Thank you. I do want to reiterate too, the committee did make a f one last recommendation uh, regarding this fund, um, that asking the city to consider increasing the support for this fund because of the number of projects that are coming forward looking for assistance or uh, incentives or a push. Um, this project is now tapped as far as this fiscal year with the <coughs> approval of these funds. Um, and we have at least five more projects that have approached us about it, which is a great problem for us to have. But at this point, that local facade improvement fund is now tapped out until July 1st next year, should you re-up it. Can we toss that out an agenda item and maybe Thank you, Mike. talk about that in the future here? <coughs> Budget season's right around the corner. Yeah, it usually is. The other, the other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to <coughs> understand <coughs> how this has evolved and what the source of it is, whether this comes out of our prior ordinance or if this is a separate deal or not because the ordinance itself had been a facade program in it and it had fairly strict definitions but this seems to be something independent so it still serves a good purpose but yeah absolutely we need to tighten it up next up is consideration of the third and final reading of ordinance 1086 amending the zoning ordinance the city of charles city iowa to change the classification of a parcel of realist real property from R-2 general residence district to B-2 general business district. Discussion? Uh, well, yes, this is the third and final uh, reading of this ordinance, but just for everyone's uh, review, <coughs> the Charles City Home for the Aged owns the property at 302 North Grand Avenue. It's commonly referred to as the uh, Star Home. And uh, the Charles City Home for the Aged, they have a proposal from Mr. Dennis Donovan to purchase the building, remodel it for professional office use space. So that's why they've petitioned to rezone this property from the R2 zoning to B2 <coughs> General Business District. The Planning and Zoning Commission, they have reviewed it. They have uh, recommended to the council to approve this rezoning request. And the council has approved the um, previous two readings and have uh, had a public hearing on, the pr on this ordinance. So we'd recommend approval of the third reading and also authorize the city clerk to publish the uh, approved ordinance. Discussion? Have there been any, uh, have there been any comments since our uh, previous readings? No. Okay. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Clerk will call the roll. Star. Aye. Jaeger. I'll remember Fre to abstain. <laughs> <laughs> Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Ordinance number 1086. No. Yep. An ordinance amending the zoning ordinance of the City of Charles City, Iowa to change the classification of a parcel of real property 
from R-2 General Residence District to B-2 General Business District. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt and publish Ordinance 1086? So moved. Second. Clerk, call roll. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Okay, the motion is approved. The ordinance will be, is adopted and will be published. Consideration of Resolution 120-15, accepting 20 2015 Cedar River Retaining Wall Project discussion. Well, the uh, 2015 Cedar River Retaining Wall Repair Project, that's one of uh, this year's projects that have been completed. Uh, <coughs> Building and Grounds LLC, they were our general contractor, and they have completed the work in general com um, uh, substantial compliance with the construction documents. Uh, this project included removing and uh, stabilizing the large limestone boulders on uh, two separate areas on both sides of the river. These were areas damaged in uh, two previous flood events. <coughs> First area are the, is the retaining wall just adjacent to the courthouse parking lot right by the uh, Main Street Dam. And the second area is on this side of the river, uh, the uh, retaining wall directly behind the uh, library and the Baptist Church. Uh, this project will also receive some uh, FEMA uh, disaster funding. Now the uh, project improvements, they were completed at a total cost of $45,220. Uh, our original estimate was $44,300 <laughs> and uh, Building and Grounds, they submitted a bid of $37,119. So we did have a cost overrun of about $8,100, and nearly all this cost overrun, or almost 7,000 of that, resulted in uh, one item, and that was actually when we got into the construction, we started stabilizing some of the uh, retaining wall on this side of the river. We decided we, in order to do the job right, we just needed to um, enlarge that area and do more of the stabilization. So that's why we have um, more of that cost. Uh, we, the city has been provided a maintenance bond. It's a, a two-year maintenance bond. <coughs> so we recommend uh, resolu uh, approval of resolution 120-15, as well as authorizing the final payment for this project. Discussion and questions? So since you agree with the extra work, John, you'll personally guarantee, besides <laughs> their bonded guarantee, that it'll all stay there now and work? <laughs> well, actually, in June, um, you know, we had that flood event, and... Um, uh, this uh, area on this side of the river was actually completely inundated, yep. and it performed very well. Okay. Just checking. I to make sure. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> John, I should, should have said something to you earlier, and I, I forgot it. Can't get to it. But the part here of the building and grounds is provided us with a maintenance bond that can be used if necessary. That's for the work to be done, not for the work that has been done. No, that's for the work that has been done. It's a maintenance bond that will run from. Uh, so do we have some coverage for what needs to be done to correct? Right. Okay. That's the maintenance bond. Yeah, for 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 this work that they're doing right now for the repairs okay. repair work. So they're they're going to cover some of that for the period of how many years? Two is it two? No, years? for the for the work from that they're actually on. for the work that they actually did this summer for us. If it's determined there's something wrong with it or if uh, okay. something uh, I think isn't holding, then they. Uh, their maintenance bond will um, cover it. Cover that. Your yes. point, Steve, is from this point on. Right. Right. So if we're going to have any floods, let's have minor ones, and in this next and two-year period, next nothing two beyond years. that. Well, <laughs> on that let's happy not, note. Let's not have any. <laughs> so moved, Your Honor. Second. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Clerk will call the roll. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Okay, resolution 120 dash. 15 is approved. Federation Resolution 121-15, approving additional reimbursement to the Charles City School District for the First Avenue Extension Project. Discussion. Uh, well, so, as we all know, um, as part of the new middle school project, First Avenue is being extended and improved between L Street and Park Avenue. And um, the school district, they have... Uh, 
uh, have under contract McKenna's excavating to do part of this work. Uh, McKenna's is doing the underground work, the uh, grading and storm sewer and subdrain work for the street project as well as their site work. Uh, recently, McKenna's excavating, uh, due to some unforeseen conditions, they've uh, resulted in some additional work that's uh, has some additional cost uh, associated with it, and I have a summary there for you. <coughs> some water main needs to be relocated due to uh, storm sewer intake. That's about $9,300. We have a couple of um, modifications to some intakes for $800, some additional uh, support around that sanitary sewer as part of these uh, intakes. Uh, that's a little over well, $370 as well as between um, Central Avenue and Park Avenue, there's some area of uh, unstable subgrade that has to be um, stabilized with some uh, larger rock, and that's a little over 2000 So there's an additional cost of almost $12,600. Now, uh, we've uh, been working with the, uh, with the engineer, and these are legitimate costs, and the school district, the contract between the school district and McKenna's that does uh, have a me mechanism in there or change orders because this project is um, a lump sum bid, but they do have the ability to do change orders. And the reason that's before you is the back in March, the council and the school district, they approved an agreement <coughs> to cost share for this, and the um, this agreement stipulated that the city would reimburse the school district 100% of the bid amount and it really doesn't address any type of these additional costs so we'd recommend this resolution approving the additional reimbursement to the school district for these additional uh, work items I think I would add to that that the intention was to pay for the cost <coughs> of the street and I think that actually when it says we're going to reimburse them for the bid amount it contemplates the bid as may be adjusted by the contract mm -hmm. so I, I think it's consistent with what we agreed to do if they had not had a provision for adjustment in the cost then I might have had some problem but it's typical contract if they run in unforeseen circumstances they can adjust that so I think we're really only doing what we had agreed to do yeah. and all, the, all this work is directly related to the street portion itself right you know, the rest of the school works now <coughs> these, these items here I mean they're they're all fairly normal I mean, uh, is there anything that we could have done to maybe have located these previously, or is it just they're they're on? I mean, they're not, they're not you know surveyed in our GIS system, nothing or uh, <coughs> uh, excuse me, no. Uh, especially like the um, the when they actually we had the water main lo located, but when it was actually excavated, the actual location of it was uh, not where the lo locate was. Yeah, once once that. Uh, once the uh, surface is removed, things tend to jump all of a sudden on us. So, no, so this is pr pretty normal. I just didn't know if there's anything that we could have in place or future-wise to maybe avoid some of these things, but which we would have replaced potentially anyway. So, anytime you're digging a hole, <laughs> you never know what you might find. Surprise every time. The um, extension of First Avenue. What's that's three blocks? Yes. Yeah, because it's from I think, uh, L I think to that's costing us in excess of two hundred thousand dollars to put in the street, and we're doing that. And without the middle school expansion and so on, we probably wouldn't do that. But it's a good asset to the city to have it because it gives those people a second access or excess out of that area. So I think that's good. But but we're putting another twelve thousand dollars into it. Uh, we're doing an awful lot to help the school, and I have no problem with that, but I just want to recognize that we're working with them pretty heavy on it. Further discussion? We have a funding source for this extra money then, street related or? Take it out of the councilman's salaries. It's still within our budget amount. Oh, that's right. And it'll come out of the sewer funds and water funds. It's reven part of its revenue funds and part of its mm -hmm. uh, local option sales tax, right? Well, it comes out of funds we can't use for anything else, but I think it's worthwhile. Yeah. Further questions or discussion? I still move. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Yeager. Aye. Friesman. Aye.
Resolution 121-15 is approved. Miscellaneous correspondence? None. City Attorney's Report. The only thing I'd say is that um, <coughs> we are, we, the staff meets with me every Wednesday afternoon and we are continuing to work away on our nuisance conditions. We are establishing a priority list of problem properties in town, which in fact, I handed that out to him. Okay. And so we're going to, we're, we've already made some progress on some of these properties and we're going to keep working on those. So I think you'll see some continuing progress in town. I think that we're working hard on the rental inspection provision. So <coughs> I really think it's beginning to pay dividends and the fact <coughs> that we, I'm, I'm receiving fewer complaints from the citizens. So I think they're recognizing that we're making some progress and they're getting bang, bang for their buck on these areas. So Good. what is the prime? Priority list is the first page the number one it's, priority. It's actually it's somewhat of a prior prioritized list as far as um, how you see <coughs> the sequence you see in there. The first two specifically we've been we've been working on quite a deal the last year or so, and uh, so as you go down as you go down through there, it's it's for one reason or another why we uh, ranked some ahead of the other, but that's essentially in the list of how you're seeing them in order there. You have a nice brochure. It is. <laughs> it's uptown. So, it's so beautiful in color. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Actually, Steve, I'm really pleased that you've provided this to us. It's much easier for me to visualize stuff than to hear you talk it through because the, the pictures are really apparent. Yeah. So thank I, you for doing that. You bet. We thought that was important. Uh, we went. Uh, Paul and Jason and I went out on a tour. Well, September 1st. It's right on there and. Uh, Took a look at some of the some of the uh, locations that have been brought to their attention, some that they had seen, some that I, I had seen, and uh, we took a look at those, took pictures, and took notes, and thought this would be a good way to present them so you guys could. Uh, and the cover page is properties that have been addressed yeah, to a certain extent. Yeah, I had fun with the cover page. Those are the four, those are four of the ones that we've addressed in one way, shape, or form. Um, as you work your way from left to right, the one on the left was. And completely removed by the property owner. The second one was 507 right, which is the one the one that the city paid to demo and take out. The one beside that is um, it's got siding on at least half of it now. It's moving. And uh, the last one there is the the property <coughs> that was completely covered by trees and brush. You couldn't even see it. It so. would nearly call it qualify as a forest reserve. And the third one's on Fourth Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm stealing your. Uh, no, we, no, we've segued, no. segued right into mine. No, I guess. go ahead. Are you, are you going to comment on you? You're giving a presentation <laughs> in um, Cedar Rapids, correct? Yes. Uh, um, between the city of Manchester and 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 Charles City, we're we're giving a presentation <coughs> a presentation on um, nuisance abatement um, practices, policies, and and so. We'll be uh, doing that bright and early on Friday morning at eight o'clock. So. so, so this wasn't really for us. This was this was for the the, 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 the <laughs> this presentation. This is completely separate, actually. <laughs> I, oh, I, have a, oh. I have a completely different PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint for okay. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a copy to of the that. Too, so that's even more spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's got a good closer in it. No <laughs> area. Since we're both whitewater communities, you know, so if all those fills, just put it in whitewater park. So that's, <laughs> that's how we wrap it up. Um, the, the other sheet I want to draw your attention to. This this is kind of a follow up from what. Uh, what we put together last year. It actually has uh, a total page on the front. Then the next two pages are everything from uh, July 1st of 2014 till today, so a little over a year, just on the various properties, mowing and refuse and all that type of good stuff uh, of what we've done last year or so. So just to keep that, keep that in front of you so, you, so you're aware. And, and if there are places on there, or places in your mind that aren't on that list, please let us know so we can address them. On, on a mowing one, so somebody lets their grass grow too long and we mow it for them? Yes. Then do we bill the property owner for that? Yeah, we, I okay. think we, we usually bill, bill the property owner first, and if they don't pay, then we assess as a lien to the property. And they're given notice first, though, before it gets to that point where we we're actually mowing it. it. I think we post it, don't we? Well, you know, we, you call them, you try and hunt them down, and that doesn't work. We make work. an effort. Yeah, yeah, it, it's not just something on a whim like, oh, let's, let's go mow. No, it, they're, they're given plenty of opportunities. They're given plenty of opportunity to mow it. We don't like mowing grass. No. I think this is great. 
I think we made good progress on that. That's good. Let's keep it up. Add substance to what we've been talking about. Yeah. Yeah, but it's obvious we got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. And as we tackle one or two, then it seems like another couple. They're kind of like mushrooms. They keep popping up. Yeah. Try to make a top ten list. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end up with like 16. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, that's, I appreciate the work, but we've got to keep after it. Top ten list you don't want to make. <laughs> you just start, yeah, you start just over. start at one end and come back and start over. So. Yeah. Uh, the only other things I have to mention were, were um, uh, Cambrix. We have a coordination agreement with, with Cambrix that we are updating tonight. Uh, nothing that needs council approval. There's nothing new. We're just basically changing the name from Salisbury to Cambrix. So just so the council's aware, Mayor is signing off on that as our Hugh and Ralph. And let's see. Well, then uh, I will eat conference this Wednesday through Friday, and then uh, Mayor Trudy and Councilman Hammond and I will be attending that. And then from Saturday to Wednesday, I'll be at the ICMA conference in Seattle. So I'll be out of the office Ooh. for about a week or so. Other than that, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Back to the city clerk's report. <laughs> Saved the best for last, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> um, we will not be having a planning session September 28th. Steve is going to be gone, um, and I was going to be gone too, but I would come back if we needed to. But there's only one item that we had to discuss, and it's very, very minor. We don't even know if it's going to need to go to a planning session. So we thought we'd give you guys a break. So there will not be a planning session on September 28th. Um, and I want to thank Keith and Dan and Mike for submitting papers to run for City Council. They're the only ones that submitted, so everybody's going to be unopposed. So I want to thank them for putting their names out there. I think there should still be a debate. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> it happens up in Wrightsville, right? <laughs> oh, let's don't even go there. Okay, but that's all I have. So, Board, Commission, or Committee reports? Since neither Ralph nor Steve mentioned it in their reports, the uh, Dog oh. Ordinance Committee did meet, which is Michael, myself, and Hugh, plus these two esteemed gentlemen over here. Where? We're, uh, we're going to be uh, <laughs> working on that, and hopefully there will be something coming through to a workshop shortly. Mm -hmm. So we get that, get that going, get that completed. Yeah, we would have talked about it on the 28th, but Steve's going to be gone. He really wanted to be here for that discussion. <laughs> so he did not want to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've kind of sat on it long enough. We yeah. can get it uh, we'll get a completed. I've already done some drafting on it, so we'll get that to you pretty soon. Well, but we, we took our time doing it right, and I think we've come to a so. pretty, good, pretty good solution. I hope so. Time will tell. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? So I'll move, Your Honor. Second. We don't meet this All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, we're